What if I told you that love, connection, and attachment aren't just emotional experiences, but deeply wired into your brain? The way you bond and connect isn't just psychological, it's biological. Neuroscience has uncovered how attachment patterns form at a neural level, how these deep emotional bonds are imprinted in the mind, and most importantly, what this means for attachment healing and moving towards earning security. In this video, we're taking a deep dive into the science of attachment, how your brain shapes relationships, and how you can rewire it for deeper, more satisfying connection. We'll cover the brain's role in attachment and what the science reveals, how early experiences shape the way we love and connect, the free energy principle and how your brain predicts safety, how therapy and therapeutic interventions can literally rewire the structure of your brain for healthier, more satisfying relationships. Our brains are wired for connection. From birth, we depend on caregivers and creating these strong, safe bonds for our survival. Neuroscience shows that attachment isn't just an emotional experience. It's a biological process that involves specific brain regions and neurochemicals. The main players in attachment include the limbic system, the emotional center of the brain involved in love, connection, and the fear response. The prefrontal cortex is involved in deeper, more conscious emotional regulation and formation of stable relationships. The amygdala, the alarm system of the mind responsible for threat detection and emotional rejection. And lastly, the oxytocin and dopamine system, which are the nature's love hormones responsible for connection and the feel-good feelings we get from relationships. Research shows that secure attachment leads to a well-regulated nervous system, whereas insecure attachment is correlated with patterns of chronic dysregulation. From infancy, from the earliest moments of our conceptions, even before birth, our minds or bodies are taking in information and assessing threats. Is the world safe? Am I safe? What's actually happening? And creating a model, a structure that can respond to the kind of world, the kind of caregiver given environment we're coming into. These early experiences shape our attachment system that imprints in our mind and our body. If we have secure attachment, we know we can trust others, have emotional safety, and also be independent in a healthy way. Whereas if you have insecure attachment, your mind, your predictions say that relationships may be inherently fraught with danger, anxiety, and that things may be unstable. So when a child experiences consistent love, caregiving that is attuned and responsive and actually helps regulate the brain, the body, there's neural pathways that positively reinforce these experiences. So the child from the earliest moments as they grow into adulthood knows not only how to regulate their experiences, their emotions in relationships, they also take that in, learn how to do it on their own too. But when the care is unpredictable or unsafe, then the mind and the body are wired for hypervigilance, scanning for threats, or hypoarousal, a kind of shutdown in order to avoid being hurt. One of the main functions of the mind is to predict what's going to happen. If we have safe, loving, trusting relationships, the mind creates models and predictions because of the data that's fed in. You can not only look for that in the future, you also know how to do safe, loving relationships, how to function in them. This is what we call secure functioning. Whereas if you have experiences with insecure attachment where the care may be misattuned or it may be unsafe relationships, your mind, your body figure out ways to adapt and survive those conditions and also predict those into the future. One of the most groundbreaking discoveries in neuroscience is the free energy principle, that the mind is constantly making predictions about relationships in the future. According to this principle, the mind is constantly trying to make predictions in order to minimize uncertainty. The mind relies on past experiences to predict what's safe and what's dangerous. So if you grow up with consistent loving caregivers, your mind actually begins to predict these kind 
kind of experiences into the future and can actually seek them out. Whereas if you grow up with inconsistent care, unsafe caregivers, your mind also learns to detect those threats, that danger, and adapt to it. And this really gets to the core of why it's so difficult to change attachment patterns. These are kind of like core wounds that are deeply wired into the mind and the body. You're actually constantly on the lookout for these patterns, for these behaviors, whether you know it or not. The good news is that these attachment patterns can be rewired with specific therapeutic interventions. And neuroscience shows that attachment patterns aren't fixed. They can change. Just the same way you may have learned to scan and look out for danger, unsafe relationships, you can also over time learn trust and safety in relationships. And in order to build these safe, trusting relationships, you actually need that sensory data. The mind needs to have that input, and it could be through actual safe relationships with friends, coworkers, uh, therapists, therapeutic relationships, or it can even be imaginal, like using the ideal parent figure protocol. And by stacking these experiences, having enough of them, your mind can learn these new, positive, secure relating patterns. Meditation, as it applies to emotional regulation, is especially useful in calming the amygdala and helping you to emotionally regulate. It's also shown that meditation activates the prefrontal cortex, which can slow the mind down enough that instead of reacting, you're more in the moment responding, and you can actually take in some of the new experiences more readily. Another way you can work with insecure attachment patterns and these negative predictions is actually looking for them in the moment. So for example, you may find yourself constantly making negative predictions that you may be rejected or you may feel not good enough about yourself. And instead of just going with the same old, same old, you can begin to actively challenge these assumptions and try to push into the positive. What would be a positive assumption here in this situation? You can also look for whether these experiences, these negative assumptions are coming from the present moment because it very well may be that the situations you're finding yourself in are actually negative. They really are. Or whether there's an overlay from the past into the present moment that just pushes the old stories on top of what's actually happening. And the present moment may actually have something useful, something different. Another way to work with insecure attachment is neuroscience-backed therapies like the ideal parent figure protocol and attachment specific modalities. And the big advantage there is that they're specifically targeted to rewiring the insecure attachment patterns and generating the new positive secure experiences. So your mind can begin to take them in and the structure of the mind, the body can change. If you want to heal your insecure attachment and rewire your brain towards earning security, you can check out our services at mindfulattachmentcoaching.com. We offer classes, workshops, and also one-to-one -one services in order to rewire your attachment system towards security. And with the right tools and support, you can rewire your brain towards love, trust, security, and connection. And if you found this video helpful, you can subscribe for more insights. And also feel free to drop a comment below. If there's anything you're wondering about or want to share about what you're noticing, how your brain works, your attachment patterns, feel free to drop a comment below. I do read them and I'd be happy to respond.